Oh, it's proper humid at the moment, but welcome to another vlog. And this month I'm down in Reading where I'm about to get set up on my syndicate water. The barrel's all loaded up. I've yet to push it down to the lake and look for a swim. But what I'm going to be talking about in this month's vlog is not just my own fishing. It's also that topic of hormones that you might see on social media. Is it fact? Is it fiction? Well, I've yet to give an opinion on this. And the reason for that is because I could really go in depth on it rather than just posting a couple of lines on social media. So I'm going to be talking about my opinions on it, what I know about it. But before we do that, let's get the barrel pushed down to the lake, have a look round, find a swim, get myself set up, and then we'll get stuck into things. So here we go. from the lake behind me what kind of conditions it's like at the moment because it's flat calm very very humid I've already told you it's 28 29 degrees and it's definitely gonna be pretty tricky trying to get a bite from here I think over the next couple of days but obviously you've got to be in it to win it now I've had a look around not sure where I'm gonna go but probably in the middle area where most of the weed tends to be both banks are pretty good you've got a swim called barracks on one side which I've done not too bad out of and just opposite there there's a swim called nettles which I've yet to fish so I might end up in there, but uh, I've had a look from barracks and it looks nice. And I'm just about to go and have a look in nettles in a moment, so I'll make my choice probably when I get around there. But uh, just to give you a bit of an idea what it's like at the moment, there is a fish here called Domino, which does the laps of the lake on a regular basis. It's a white ghosty koi you see on a regular basis going up and down the lake, and it really does do some mileage. But at the moment, it's sat in one of the snags doing nothing, so it's either been lost recently or it's probably just because of the conditions at the moment because it is very, very sticky and very humid and not really the kind of conditions you'd expect fish to be moving about much. But you never know, it's quite deep here. So uh, let's go and have a look at nettles and see what it looks like and make a decision from there. So let's give you an insight into the swim that I'm fishing at the moment. This is called the nettles because there's loads of nettles behind here. And you're only allowed to use two rods on this lake. And I've got the left hand rod roughly about 14 wraps out to where it's nice and clear. There's a lot of weed out in front. It's, some of it's quite thick. And you're looking for those clear areas and there's a nice clear area about 13, 14 wraps out. Right hand rod, that is roughly about 13 wraps out where there's a nice hard patch you cast the lead out and it goes down with a nice donk and as you pull it back it's a little gravelly area not too big a spot i've baited that as well with quite a lot of bait i put both rods on single wafters over the top of about two or three kilos of boilies so there's a nice spread of bait out there and there's still plenty of fish in here for me to catch at the moment as well. I know last year I did all right in here, caught a, a fish called the barbecue lin, but there is a fish in here that's bigger than that, which is known as the big zip, and it's over 50 pounds at the moment, so I'd love to get that one in the album. But there are some decent backups as well, and this year I've done okay. I've had a couple of the A-team, a fish known as the, the VS lin at 39, and one called shoulders at 41 as well. I've not shown those fish yet on, on my vlogs, but um, I will do at some stage during the course of the year. But there's still plenty of other good fish in here, loads of nice scalies and nice mirrors, including a few nice commons as well. So uh, if I'm honest, I'm not just here to catch the biggins, I'm on this lake because there's lots of nice fish in here and it is a really nice venue to fish as well. And it's quite a tricky venue as well, they're not uh, easy to get out of here. It's a venue that you definitely have to work for and outthink the fish. And at the moment, it is that time of the year when they are a little bit tricky because there's loads of weed about, there's lots of food in the weed, there's the fish is in a lot of pressure over the last few months as well so they're very much aware of what anglers are about and it makes catching them a little bit harder as well as uh, the fact there's lots of natural food in here as well but I've got 48 hours ahead of me so uh, you know we'll see what happens I'll just had a little walk around this afternoon just to see if there's any carp about and I found a load at the top end, including the big zip, so I think I'm gonna have a little go up there, see if I can 
managed to get one out of there because they're really close in and they definitely look catchable as well. So I'm going to get these uh, rods packed away and put a few bits and pieces on the barra and uh, have a look at the other end of the lake, see if we can catch one from up there. There we go, that's uh, not bad for 10 minutes of stalking. Saw the fish at the top end, and there was a few guns amongst them. But this little baby's picked up the hook bait, but when he looks like that, obviously I'm not bothered because that's an absolute stunner. Lovely. So here's a quick look at the tactics I used to catch that fish from close into the reeds, just using a handful or so grains of sweet corn along the reeds, and then I've just presented a nice simple rig over the top of it. I've got a 15 pound camo outline connected to a lead clip, a three ounce lead, roughly about eight inches of captive coated hook link with all of the outer coating taken off. That's connected to a size six snag hook. I've got a liner liner on there, and then for the hook bait, all I'm using is one of the DNA baits, PB wafters. Nice and visual, very smelly, and very effective when you're fishing over the top of a bit of sweet corn. So then, let's get stuck into this topic of hormones that seems to be doing the round on social media once again. It seems to crop up every so often and the first time I ever heard about this was about 10 years ago when I don't know who it was but it was some guys in the BCAC the British Carp Angling Championships were getting accused of using hormones in the baits because they were catching multiple fish every time they entered these events and I remember at the time Rob Hughes who then used to run the BCAC did a lot of research into it asked a lot of questions to people that were entering the event and yes the topic had been discussed by lots of people within the event but nobody had actually gone out and got any it was just dismissed and obviously in recent times it's cropped up again whereby I think it was last year somebody did a podcast and another guy in the podcast and he accused some of these guys who were fishing on a day ticket waters and having these red letter day sessions catching multiple fish one after another that they were using hormones in the baits and obviously from then grapevine has escalated and certain anglers have been accused of doing all sorts of things with hormones so uh, my opinion on this is that having worked at carp talk for many many years i know what the carp fishing grapevine is like and once something gets on the grapevine it can either get swept to one side or it can get carried on and if something gets carried on it gets completely out of control and i do think at this present moment in time this topic is definitely getting out of control and the reason for that is that what you're seeing is lots of people googling hormones and carp and seen these scientific papers that were written over in Australia whereby the government over there, the class carp as vermin, they're doing everything they can to eradicate them from the river systems and one of the things that's been trialled is 
the injecting carp with hormones to then stimulate spawning, attracts all the fish to the area. That then localises the carp and it makes the process of eliminating the carp a lot easier either by poisoning or by netting or electrofishing, just getting rid of the carp out of the area. So then people are putting two and two together, thinking that this is the product that people in the carp fishing industry are using and that's why they're having these red letter day sessions and catching multiple fish. But the guys who've been accused of using hormones, I've known them for many, many years since they was young lads. I can remember one of them, the most famous one of the lot, I'm not going to name him, and entering the BCAC Young Carpers Championships and he was a very, very talented carp angler when he was a young lad and you could stick him in the event in any of the eliminators and he had a chance of qualifying because he was that good a carp angler. He comes from good stock, his dad's a former BCAC champion and he's a very, very talented carp angler and I personally think that you could give him any bait and he would have a chance of catching, certainly on linear, from any swim and producing the goods from any venue. He's just a naturally gifted carp angler and indeed so are his mates It's also been drawn into this topic because I've known those for many years from working on the Carp Talk news desk and also one of them I've been fishing with since a, a young age and I've seen him fish only quite recently. I did a, a video with him last year on Grenville's and he's one of these guys who, he doesn't go fishing very often but when he does go fishing he gives it 110%. He's a lot younger than me and I know what I was like when I was younger. I'm not so much like that these days, but when I was younger, I wanted to catch more than anybody else. And he's definitely got that within him. He just wants to go to a lake and just empty the lake, just catch loads of fish, make the most of his, his limited time. And there's things that you can do to do that. You know, there's definitely things that you can do to influence that. I've talked about that before on these vlogs about fishing for big carp or fishing for bites. There's things you can do that can influence both things. When it comes to big carp, there's, things you can do with your bait, there's things you can do with your rig, there's certain swims you can fish, certain times of the day you can target certain areas and obviously when it comes to catching lots of fish there's lots of things you can do with your liquids, your attractors, your baits and also your work ethic and I do think that these guys who have been drawn to this subject are the type who just want to go to lakes and get loads of bites which is a lot different to what a lot of people like to do and I know some of my friends that are a lot older than me they only want to get a couple of bites a day any more than that they're not enjoying the fishing and I must admit that nowadays I don't want to get that I don't want five six seven eight nine ten carp a day it's just it just wear me out taking photographs of them all rebaiting re-rigging recasting etc but these guys they absolutely enjoy that side of things so do I think that they're doing something different? Well, yes, they are doing something different in my mind. It's to do with the way that they fish, the effort that they put into their fishing. Of course, there's little edges that it can do with the liquids. I know one of them did a podcast either last year or the year before where he talked about having an edge with his liquids, but that doesn't mean he's talking about using hormones. Carp and liquids and carp fishing has been talked about for many years. There's loads of good anglers out there that's had an edge on lots of lakes from using certain liquids. But, um, you know, just to sort of say that they're using hormones, it's, it's just wrong, it really is. And this is the problem with carp fishing because the grapevine, when something gets debated on the grapevine, it just ends up going all over the place. And I do think that that's what's happened on this occasion because I've heard all sorts of different things talked about these guys on the grapevine. And as somebody that knows them, I do think it's a little bit unfair because I know the guy that also did the, the podcast where he was talking about these guys using hormones and I must say that if there's an angler out there that does like to complicate things it's definitely him but that's not to knock him he's a decent lad he's a good angler all he was doing was repeating stuff that he'd, he'd heard on the grapevine but the grapevine's a funny old thing it really is and I do think these guys have been unfairly treated by the carp fishing industry so far because there's very little evidence out there to suggest that they're doing any form of cheating and you know let's be honest they're fishing day ticket lakes where the majority of people that fish those kind of day ticket lakes tend to be beginners and if beginners are on these lakes and struggling and then these guys turn up and start getting multiple fish hits you know they're, they're really good carp anglers so it doesn't surprise me that they go to these lakes and get these multiple fish hits on a regular basis just by using the kind of things that all of us do because let's be honest if some kind of product which made the carp become addictive to the bait was available then one of the bait companies would be selling it and they'd be making an absolute fortune out of it so you know I do think this whole topic has been debated really badly on the grapevine that these guys names have not been ruined but definitely tarnished which I don't think is very fair 
and that's the reason why I've decided to do this little chat today about this topic because I'm experienced in the industry, I've dealt with lots of similar topics like this before and at the moment there's no evidence to suggest that they're doing anything wrong whatsoever despite a company recently going online and saying they were glad to get rid of one of these guys because they were using hormones which again is just added to the, the whole complication of this discussion. It was unnecessary, unfounded and totally unfair if, if I'm honest. So um, I hope by me talking about this today has given some of you guys a little bit of clarity on the subject. But that's just my opinion on this. You guys watching this are going to obviously have your own. But I do think that until some more substantial evidence comes along to suggest otherwise, we should just let these guys get on with their fishing and to keep on catching the carp that they do because they're all absolutely phenomenal carp anglers. Lovely. Nice 26 pound mirror. Lovely. It's probably beat me up as well <laughs> doing the photos. There's the other side of it. Really nice fish. Rod's only been out a couple of hours as well, so sounds like there's a few fish in front of me. That's good. The folder cradle from Avid Carp is the ultimate in speed protection and mobility. The folding design makes this the most compact cradle of its kind on the market. Featuring a unique clip arrangement, this lightweight cradle can be set up and packed away in just seconds. The thick padded base and walled sides offer a superb level of padding for those who wish to travel light without any sacrifice for protection. It comes in two different sizes, a standard and an XL, and is made from fish friendly material which is fast drying. For more info, check them out at avidcarp.com. Now the rods have been out for a few hours now and I am starting to get those little niggling thoughts in my mind about have, have they fallen right, have they fallen okay? And I think this is something we all get from time to time, you get those little niggling doubts about whether a rod's weeded up or it's not presented right. So do you reel it in, do you leave it, do you give it a little bit longer? 
obviously the more experienced you are as a car panger, the more you can sort those kind of situations out. But if I do think there's fish in front of me, then I'm more inclined to leave a rod in place until something happens rather than get it in and start markering and leading around. I know you hear these people talk about some lakes where the carp aren't scared of marker floats, they know what leads are all about, blah, blah, blah. But on some lakes, they definitely are spooky of them. And this is one lake where they definitely don't like casting on top of them. So I prefer to leave the rods in place, even though I have got a few doubts about me left hand rod at the moment. It didn't go down perfectly well. I did bring back a little bit of weed on the marker float as well. Nothing's developed over the, the few hours that it's been out there, so the, the doubts are starting to develop. And um, this is something that all carp anglers get. You've just got to process them in the right way. But uh, for the time being, I think I'm going to leave them in place because there's definitely carp in front of me. I've seen a couple show this morning. And when there's fish in front of you, and they're feeding especially, then they can get quite aggressive. And even though it might be weeded up, they'll start digging around, start rooting around, and they'll even suck at items that are stuck in the weed. And sometimes I'm sure they do get hooked up on it as well when, uh, when there's a bit of weed on it. So I'm actually fairly sure that uh, I'm doing the right thing. I'm not messing the swim up too much. When there's carp in front of me, it's better off just leaving them to it and let the rods do the talk. And obviously if I get up in the morning and nothing's happened and still fish in front of me, then I might think differently. But for the time being, I think I'm going to leave them in place. Absolute corker this fish is. Look at that. What a beauty. 